Peace and Yah bless. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Continuation of reflection with correction. Finishing up with the last few points here pertaining to this young man, Yea. We left off at uh, Ezra chapter 10, actually at chapter 9 of Ezra. Chapter 9 of Ezra, verse 12, is where we had left off at, and we will continue from that point on. Now, verse 12 of Ezra chapter 9 reads, Now therefore give not your daughters unto their sons, neither take their daughters unto your sons, nor seek their peace, nor their wealth forever, that ye may be strong and eat the good of the land, and leave it for an inheritance to your children forever. So, we're not to seek the peace of other nations, nor to seek the wealth of them. Now, this young man is trying to make peace with his enemies, and he's trying to seek the wealth of his enemies. And it's just not working out for him. Let's move to Ezra chapter 10. Move down one chapter. Uh, and let's go directly to verse 3. And verse 3 reads, Now therefore let us make a covenant with our strength, or let us make a covenant with Yah, to put away all the wives, such as are born of them according to the counsel of the children, according to the, the counsel of my Lord, or the, according to the counsel of, of Ezra, and of those that tremble at the commandment of our strength, who is Yah, and let it be done according to the law. So to put away the strange wives in accordance to the law. Now let's go ahead and move down to chapter, uh, to verse 10 of the same chapter. We are in Ezra chapter 10 and we're reading verse 10. <clears throat> and verse 10 reads, And Ezra the priest, remember he is both priest and prophet. He wears both hats. And Ezra the priest stood up and said unto them, Ye have transgressed that sin." And have taken strange wives to increase the trespass of Israel. So to do this thing is a trespass and it increases the trespass as a nation. People are confused as to why when one of us do something, all of us pays. That's because we are a family. If one of your family members went, went out and murdered some people innocently or did something that was foul, your whole family are shamed for it. And they're persecuted for it. And they're punished for it one way or another. If you're wearing the same name or you're the same akin. That's why when one, sometimes many people, once their family do something foul, they will either relocate or change their name or something. So therefore, we must understand, well, one of us mess up, we all pay. It has been that way in the days of old. It's still that way today. We're probably the only people where when one of us does something that's shameful, the rest of us are absolutely embarrassed, even if we don't even know him. We just feel ashamed for this thing because we understand our connection to him, even though we don't even know him. All right. Now let's read verse 11. And verse 11 reads, Now therefore make confession unto Yah, our, make confession unto the strength of our fathers, or unto, it reads in this book, unto the Lord God of your fathers. Okay? That's what it reads in my book. And do his pleasure. And separate yourselves from the people of the land and from the strange wise. So we are to separate ourselves from strangers. And we are to certainly separate ourselves from strange wise. It don't matter where they're from. That doesn't have anything to do with the fact that they have to be from the land of Canaan. They can be from the land of Armenia. All right. Now moving down. So we were to separate ourselves from the strange wives which is verse 11. Now let's jump to verse 14 that we may get a clear understanding of what this transgression is. Now, let now our rulers, who are the leaders, the princes, of all the congregations stand, and let them which have taken strange wives in our cities come at appointed times, and with them the elders of every city, and the judges thereof, until the fierce wrath of our strength For this manner be turned from us. So let's all meet all of you who have transgressed the Most High's law, statutes, judgments, and precepts in the various cities. You're to come up, and your elders are to come up. 
and we are to discuss this matter. And if you don't come, we're going to confiscate all your goods. That is when collectively we punish any wrongdoer in the midst of us. Because when you're doing wrong and we don't punish you for it, then we pay as a collective. And we're not going to pay on your account. So therefore, you come up, you separate yourself from these strange wives, and if you don't come, we're taking all your stuff. And then we're going to banish you from the midst of us. This is pretty much all that's taking place here. And all of this is being done to remove the fierce wrath that Yah has brought upon his people for transgressing, marrying strange wives. And yea, is in transgression of doing this very thing, which is he's mingling his seed with these strangers and thus is causing a problem for him. All right. So these are some of the main things that he has done or is being done that has caused the problems that we're having. Mingling his seed, which is an error. All right. Now, let's go to point 12. I saw a, a video on YouTube where he's sitting in front of the face of a, of a European. And the European is telling him, well, uh, stop calling out the entire group and call out individuals in the group. Now, when we are being dragged through the streets on the television screen of all of these many nations where our enemies are in charge. They own the, the police stations. They own the high-rise buildings. They own the media outlets, the radio stations, the television stations, and all forms of media, including this one. When we're being paraded on their TV screens or through the streets as thugs, it is never the individual. It is always the entire group. We are labeled as a collective, as a people. However, when they are doing unrighteousness, they don't want it to be labeled as a group activity. They want it to be labeled as an individual activity. So therefore, they are duplicitous in their ways of how they want to measure unrighteousness. And the reason why they're duplicitous in this behavior is because they are unrighteous people from the start. This is why we were sent in the midst of them. We are a righteous people or we were a righteous people and we chose unrighteousness. So the Most High delivered us into the hands of unrighteous people. And somehow we are in the midst of unrighteous people hoping to get righteousness out of unrighteous people does not work. And once we return back onto the law, statutes, judgments, and precepts, understanding exactly who we are and what is expected of us, understanding exactly where we are and why we are here, then it all makes sense. And we understand how to maneuver in this minefield in the midst of the nations, in the midst of the heathen. So this man is sitting here having an interview with one of his enemies. Instead of him turning to Yah, this man is going to turn his enemies and try to seek and build alliances with them, thinking that they're going to help him. It's a fool's errand. He's asking his enemies for help. We must understand that our enemies have a vested interest in keeping things, the status quo, the way they are. They have no intent on helping you. They have enslaved you. They have murdered you and sold you across the earth. They have made laws against you and your children. And they have no interest in helping you get alongside them or to get above them. None. We are to understand that our only help is Yah. So yeah, you're to stop sitting in interviews asking your enemies, will you help me? The answer is no. But he's going to look at you and tell you yes because you may be foolish enough to believe it. When you can look throughout history in all the lands of our captivity and see clearly nothing that has been promised unto us by our enemies has ever been given to us. They can't give us anything that the Most High didn't say he was going to give to us. So when you expect help 
from those who have murdered and slaughtered your people, you've lost your mind. We are to understand our only help is Yah. We turn to Yah and he's going to change your spirit. That way you deal with us in a manner that is beneficial. But as we continue, as you, yea, continue to walk after these idols and profess the name of an idol and have our JC as king on your shirt and have these big crosses on your neck, the work of men's hands, graven images, your enemies are not going to help you. In fact, no one will help you. And there's no need for you to turn and ask our people for help because our people are in a powerless state. They can't help you. Period. We can't help ourselves. The only way we can help ourselves is when we turn to Yah. Yah is your help, yea. And for any Israelite listening and for any stranger that's listening, Yah is your help. Period. We have been calling on the Isles of Christianity for centuries. It has not delivered us, nor will it ever. All right. Point 13 in the final point. This young man has led the people astray, the holy people astray. He has caused them to seek the daughters of strangers. For he is married to a stranger, and many of our high-profile men are married unto strange women. And our young men are seeing this. They're seeing this in the music videos with the songs. They're seeing the rappers with these strange women. They're seeing the football players and the basketball players with these strange outlandish women. And so now our young sons are thinking that they can find some comfort in the bosom of strangers. This is harmful behavior. It is sinful behavior. It is a grave trespass causing the most highest people to stink. This is what this is doing. This man has caused our sons and daughters to sing these songs onto strange idols. He thought the, that he had risen above the circumstances of his people because of the bread that he was eating at his enemy's table. And so we are to understand clearly, well, not because this man allows you to eat at his table means that you are above him or alongside him. And he will remind you as well, regardless of how much money he has allowed you to make, because you have been acquiescence to his abuse. He will always remind you that you and your people are the same, regardless of how much money you have. And I know that that has to be a hurtful feeling to any one of us that has made a million or a billion dollars, has totally separated himself from his people. And then they remind you, regardless of how much money that we gave you, in our eyes, you are still a, you know what. All right. So thinking that he has risen above the circumstances of his people can't be done. Let's move to Isaiah chapter 31. Isaiah chapter 31. Isaiah chapter 31, and we will read verse 6 and 7. And verse 6 of Isaiah chapter 31 reads, Turn ye unto him from whom the children of Israel have deeply revolted. So, instead of you turning unto your enemies, asking this man, will you help me? No, he ain't going to help you. He's going to say, yeah, I'll help you because the cameras are rolling. But you've got to be smart enough to know that. So we are to turn onto him whom we have revolted. Ain't no black people revolted against JC. In fact, it's a lie. It's a made-up story. But we did revolt against the strong one of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We walk contrary to his instruction. So we are to turn to him. Verse 7. For in the day every man shall cast away his idols of silver. These idols of silver and idols of gold that you've got around your neck with that man strung out on it, the work of man's hands, you're going to throw that thing away. 
and his idols of gold, all these gold JCs around your neck. This shirt you've got on, talking about JC is king, all that nonsense you're going to give up, which your own hands have made unto you for a sin. So we're to understand that all this mess you're taking part in, taking part in, JC is God on your shirt, JC is king, uh, JC strung out on your neck, JC walks, all these idolatrous behaviors you're going to let go you're going to let go of every man is going to cast away these items you're going to do it it's coming but you're in a process of refinement you don't understand that quite yet but in the process of refinement you will get to that stage and you will start shedding the things that are harmful to you so this is a reflection with correction understand that you're a young man and as you learn and as you grow, then you change. You strip away certain things. As you continue to walk the path and you understand certain things, you start correcting some things and letting go of some things. So this is for you to understand exactly which way you should walk. And there's clear instructions on how we are to walk. So let's turn to the book of Judges. Book of Judges, and we'll turn to uh, chapter 10, verse 14. And verse 14, chapter 10 of Judges reads, excuse me, once again, uh, yeah, chapter 10, and we are in verse 14, verse 14 of Judges, chapter 10. And verse 14 reads, go and cry unto the gods, lowercase, that means idols, which ye have chosen, let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. What is tribulation? Tribulation is trouble. Tribulation is trouble. We have Israelites running around talking about they're waiting for the great tribulation. You've been in tribulation since you got kicked out of Jerusalem. We have been in tribulation since we got kicked out of Jerusalem. No one is coming to suck you up into the sky. It's not happening. You will deliver yourself by turning back onto the Most High's laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts. Yea, you have told our people, J.C. Walks. You have professed this idol. You wear the work of men's hands, a graven image upon your neck. You wear a shirt stating that J.C. is king. Can't see that nowhere in here. It's nowhere in, out of the mouth of any prophet in here. You have stated all of these things. So now, as you are going through your time of trouble, and the Most High has brought his wrath upon you and upon your house, turn to J.C. and see if he will deliver you. He will not. You have to look back to your forefathers before you and those who called upon J.C. before you, and they have not been delivered. Neither will you. All right. So he's caused the holy people to stink by causing them to sing songs onto these idols. And now he has to turn his idol to deliver him. And we see him crying out aloud, crying to his enemies for help and turning to our people for support. The very people that he is pretty much spat in our faces. And now he's all alone and there's no one that delivereth including the idol that he has so professed. All right. The idol will not deliver you. The idol cannot deliver you. In closing, I can't come to your rescue, nor can any other Israelite come to your rescue. What this segment has been and is, I am showing you and those of the house of Israel who are participating in such behaviors, the errors of your ways. I'm showing it to you before your face. The Most High said he will repay you to your face, meaning you're going to see him when he's sticking it to you. Ain't no devil beating you up. Go read Isaiah chapter 45. Most High let you know I'm breaking you off. I'm the one killing you. I'm the one bringing evils upon you. 
I'm the one causing all these people to come against you. And if you want to stop any of that, you turn to the Most High. Because he is the one that's doing all of it. He kill, he makes alive. When evil comes upon you, it's the Most High. When some blessings come upon you, it's the Most High. And stop blaspheming the Most High by giving praises unto idols when you have been blessed. Stop blaspheming the Most High, talking about Satan doing this and Satan doing that and the devil doing this and the devil doing that when the Most High is sticking it to you. So right now the Most High is sticking it to Kanye. So Ye has an option. A, you can continue to turn towards that idol that has not served you nor your forefathers, or you can go into this book. Since you now understand that you're Israel, then you have to understand exactly who Israel is and what are the requirements of an Israelite according to their God. And once you figure these things out, young man, you'll be just fine. So you have to do your due diligence going to this book and read that you may determine exactly which path you will take. Should you walk the path of righteousness, you will not have to ask strangers for help. Yah is our help. He is our strength. He is our shield. And when we go before our enemies, we will always win. If we're walking in Torah, we have the most high within our hearts and our minds, and we are keeping his commandments. If we are sitting down with our enemies, we are joined un unto our enemies, we're serving the gods, idols of our enemies. We're walking in the ways of our enemies. You can just about bet and rest assured that the Most High is not dealing with you in any way, shape, or form. That's good. And hence, your own way will be returned upon your own head. So this goes out to Yea and any other Israelite that thinks that mingling with the heathen, sitting at his table, being acquiescence to his ways and his customs, it will not be beneficial to you. And this is irregardless of how much money he has allowed you to make. Peace, Israel, and Yah bless. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. And peace to the stranger that will take a hold of the Most High's law, statutes, judgments, and precepts, and live them, walk in them, and do them. And we are to turn away from idols, and mingling our seed with the heathen. For these reasons, we have been a spoil and a prey in the midst of these nations. We've been robbed and spoiled and trapped in prison houses because we refuse to hear the words of Yah. Peace, Israel, and Yah bless.